In the holy name of Jesus, amen. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. Jesus was condemned to death shortly before midday. In the heat of the sun, he hung suspended on the cross, and he said, I thirst. When he died later that afternoon, rather than water be given to him, instead a spear was thrust into his side and it outpoured blood and water. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus' opponents constantly assert that he is just mere man. And now that the blood comes from his side, well, that proves this very fact. But what of the water? Now, this isn't foreign to ancient physiology, which believed the body contained a colorless liquid called hydor along with the blood. But the spear wound proves the physical reality of Christ's death. Yes, of course. But the evangelist has something more significant in mind than simply confessing that Jesus, the man, died. The blood and water, along with the Spirit, are testified to you along, so that you would believe. The blood and water testify together to you that you would believe. Jesus promised that from him would flow springs of living water. On that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And also, he says, Everyone who drinks of the water of Jacob's well, speaking to the woman at the well, shall thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall become in him a well of water, springing up to eternal life. And also he said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Again, Jesus promised that from him would flow streams of living water for you. John also tells us that the crucified Christ is the source of the Holy Spirit. When he had breathed his last, he gave up his spirit for you. The water coming from Jesus' side confirms this promise. And after he rose from the dead, Jesus breathed on his disciples with the Holy Spirit. And then he showed them the wounds of his hands and his side. Now, there was no need to break Jesus' legs because he was already dead. All Jewish bodies had to be removed from the cross. The Jews feared that they would defile the land by allowing a corpse to hang overnight. For that, see Deuteronomy 21, 22 to 23. They think that a dead Jesus is the source of defilement. But on the contrary, the water flowing from his side shows that the opposite is true. The soldier had no need to pierce his side, but was fulfilling God's will for you. Water, purification, death, those are all bound together. It's been that way since the baptism of our Lord. John's baptism with water directed them to the Lamb of God, who would die to take away the sins of the world. Even the water into wine at the wedding of Cana foreshadows the hour of Jesus' death. When Christ is made your bridegroom and you his holy bride, made holy (laughs) by his blood. Jesus, as we heard last night, washed the disciples' feet in anticipation of the cleansing that he would provide in his death. 
The crucified Jesus is not a source of defilement. Yes, we turn our eyes from him. We cannot bear to look at him. And yet he is our only hope. He is the source of your cleansing of sin. So how do you receive the fruit of his cross, that removal of every sin and every spot and wrinkle? The cross, the water, and the giving of the spirit are joined to his blood and the atonement that his sin gives. It's all wrapped up together. And John the evangelist was there. He saw it with his eyes. He bears witness for you that you too would believe. He wrote that the spear and the water and the blood, all that happened for your sake, for your faith. Again, the evangelist, though, is begging the question. This is all written that you would believe and that you would have life in his name. But how do you receive the benefit of that water and blood that came from his side 2,000 years ago on a hill of a skull named Calvary Golgotha? How do you receive what flows from your Lord's side? John tells you in his epistle where he testifies this. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. And not only by water, but by water and the blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. Now that may all seem to be complicated theological mumbo jumbo. It's not. It's very clear. How do you know for certain that Jesus' death is for you? Where have you received the benefit of his suffering and his pain and his death this Good Friday? The Spirit, the blood, and the water testify. The Spirit, blood, and water received from the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. All of this is received by you in your baptism. Do you not know that all of you who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him through baptism into death in order that just as he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might receive newness of life. The water cleansed you because your baptism is inextricably joined by the Spirit to the suffering and death of Jesus, to his blood. The font binds you to his cross and gives you everything that Christ purchased and won for you there. Jesus died for you. And he has made you his own in baptism. And in your baptism, you are given everything that he purchased and won for you at the cross. You were given new birth, resurrection from the water of the font. You were washed in his blood and cleansed of your sin there. You received the living water that flows from his heart, from the Holy Spirit. And this water, blood, and spirit all testify that you are his own, that you are forgiven, that you are holy in his name, and that having been forgiven, Death has no power over you, and salvation is yours. Eternal life, your inheritance. Without his cross, your baptism would be no baptism. But with his cross, it is a life-giving water, full of grace and rich in every blessing for you. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen.